Okay, this is an uh, invitation for us, and we'll have a place for the flag. Hello, Father Head. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together once again. We're asking for you to watch over those represented here today. And Lord, give us that love that runs from breast to breast. Let us continue to love and respect one another as we continue to live in the county of Pickens County. These and all other blessings we ask. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have a lot of ground to cover tonight. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be moving along through that here, here shortly. Uh, next item is reading and approval of the previous minutes. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries. Thank you. We have no old business, <coughs> and we'll move into the new business. So, a number of you have signed up to speak on various matters, and I'll call on you uh, once we've had a chance to hear hear what the county's recommendation is and what the applicant has to say. Then we'll address those. Some of you are going to be for, and some of you are going to be against. What I ask is that we all be respectful of one another. Everybody has a good, has a reason to be here. Everybody's appreciated to be here. And we, while we might disagree, this group of people who are just like you, we just happen to be sitting here, and you happen to be sitting there. Um, Sorry. <laughs> anyway, be respectful of everybody. We'll move along through this. There is a national championship football game on the <laughs> And so once we've once we've heard a particular issue that is important that, that you came here for, if you want to leave, you can you can do that. What I would ask is though if you do leave, you just leave quietly so that we can uh, uh, not disturb the, the continuation of the hearing for those of us that sit here through the bitter end. And won't get to see the full national championship. <laughs> Although I don't have a dog in this fight. I had a dog in an earlier fight. <laughs> as many of you do. <clears throat> With that said, um, we're going to open up a hearing on RZ 190 592. Brandon Kent. RZ 190 Brandon Kent. The applicant is requesting to rezone a total of 2.31 acres from the current zoning RR to SR Suburban Residential. Currently, there are two residential dwellings on the property, and the applicant would like to be able to have them as separate parcels. Uh, all the criteria has been met. See the, see the map. Double time. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. See, there are already two residents on the property. Residences on the property. Sorry, I don't really want to do this. That's fine. Oh, I could have done that too. So sorry. <laughs> okay, next. And as you can see, that it is primarily surrounded by suburban residential and agriculture, and residential on the other side. The staff recommends approval of the suburban residential zoning request. In addition to this memo, I hereby incorporate the entirety of my office's file and the video recording of the Planning Commission's hearing, including but not limited to all witness testimony, in order that this information be made a part of the record and shall be available for the Board of Commissioners to review. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kent? Yes. How are you tonight? Good. What would you add to what you been talking about? Uh, for the reason for the rezone, I want to date my father half the property, um, no residential as it is now, you have to have 1.5 acres for each lot, I'll have 2.31, so 
some way to leave him half the property will be rezoned to suburban residential. So you'll have one point one four acres, I'll have one point one five acres. We're not doing any of that construction, we're not disturbing the soil, it's just simply to leave him on half the property is on the Thank you. Questions from the board? Do you have a motion? I move. We have a motion to accept the recommendation of the staff for the rezone. Is there a second? I'll second. I have two seconds. Hearing one, you can move further. <laughs> further discussion? All in favor? Raise your right hand. Would you care? So, you know, this will go to the full commission. We are the recommending body. So, we'll go to the full commission. They'll make the final statement. You're welcome to stay or you're welcome to go watch the football. All right, we'll close that hearing and we'll open a new hearing on 190593. Martin and Cynthia. Help me with that last name. Very good, thank you. I don't, is that your one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The applicant is requesting to rezone 5.71 acres from agriculture to rural residential to add a future residential site. Currently, they have a non conforming agricultural zone that is under the minimum lot size. Due to this, for them to be able to have a site to use for future use as another residential home site, the parcel must be rezoned to a more appropriate land use. As you can see, all the questions. Um, to consider for a map amendment have been answered. Staff recommends approval of the request to rezone the 5.71 acres from Ag to SR. On the map behind you, kind of shows you where it's at. <clears throat> In addition to this memo, I hereby incorporate the entirety of my office's file and the video recording of the Planning Commission's hearing, including but not limited to all witness testimony that this information be made a part of the record and shall be available for the Board of Commissioners to review. All right. Who'd like to speak for the applicant? Come forward. Come forward. We want to see you and hear you. Is that your little chair that you brought? That is. <laughs> His name is Carson. All right. Um, my name is Molly. I'm Cindy and Marty's daughter. Okay. Um, they recently sold about 20 acres on the other side. They want to see the little They want to see them every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a built in babysitter. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. Hey, thank you. Um, we have uh, Richard. Yes, sir. You, you said you. Yeah, yeah, I just want to support. Oh, I live across the street. Well, I don't live there yet, but I bought the property from them. Uh, okay. I just support them. But they should be able to do what they want. <laughs> Simple minds. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Questions from the board? Do you have a motion? I'll make a motion. <laughs> we have a motion to accept the recommendation. Is there a second? That is second. Further discussion? All in favor? Raise your right hand. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, we'll close that hearing. We'll open a hearing on RZ190597, Bagwell and Spears LLC. Development on Grandview Road. LLC, located on Grandview Road. They are requesting. To rezone 33.61 acres from agriculture to the state residential. They are wanting to develop this into a nine lot estate subdivision. It will be a private gated community. A roads will be maintained by the owners. Water will be provided by wells. All the criteria have been answered. As you can see, that's where it's at. It backs up to City of Jasper property, or property that's located in the City of Jasper. That is the lot layout that they have submitted to us. Okay. 
Okay. Who's going to speak for that? <laughs> yes, you are. I am Grant Schmelk with Agnes Spears. Okay. Uh, it's a nine lot subdivision we propose here for estate homes. Uh, we've got a lot of friends and family that want to build houses here. So we like Pickens County, but not far from here. So we look forward to being able to do that. And I think a total of nine lots. So you know, you're going to average about three acres a lot. You have, you have I think that's the minimum. Yeah. Your application says a gated community. Yes. Why'd you choose that route? It's not just privacy. Uh, lots of gates are meant to keep on to it, so. <laughs> we're, we're open to suggestions. That's <laughs> right. I, I, I guess. My dad told me that years ago. So, um, uh, you're not getting any county or city water. Uh, they do have a six inch main on the road there, but we have not made progress with the city yet. So hopefully we will eventually, but if not, we will also. Have not made the progress. Because that's in the city of Jasper. Yes, water service area. So uh, with respect to wells, will you anticipate each lot would drill their own well? Uh, probably do a community and conserve it all. Okay. Uh, but I don't think we do not. We'll see how we city does with their water. <coughs> but I guess that, would that be your preferred route to have city water if you could reach terms? Well, see, if it's right in front of the property, you think that would be it. We hope it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not saying anything's easy. So, well, with respect to your roads, mm -hmm. private roads, you going to prepare those to county standards, That's paved and everything. Uh, we weren't going to pave it all the way up to the cul-de-sac. We were going to just do gravel to, to, to the houses. Isn't the county's requirement for paving? He's wet paved, but he doesn't have Further questions for the board? So this is going to be just family? Uh, you're not selling lots to the public? Just no, that'll be for public. We have family that's going to take some of it, but there will be public for sale as well. And you don't think they will have a problem with uh, uh, getting nine septic systems? No, we've already completed our soil tests. Okay. <clears throat> Having seen what happens when the community doesn't have strong covenants with respect to sharing of the maintenance of roads, Strongly suggest that, that be definitely the very tight that are just going to it just creates unhappiness right. amongst neighbors because some people choose not to, and other people do. And, and we're going to have a little architectural discussion as well, so we don't have nine different, they'll have freedoms, but they won't be a good hodgepodge of differences. Any further questions for the applicant? We've got a number of people. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anthony Tippins. That's me, sir. All right, Anthony. Stand up and let us see you. Uh, we own a little property adjacent to the public. Are you, which side are you on? Both sides of the road. Okay. There's a little triangle next to Mr. West here mm -hmm. that we purchased from our granddad's estate years ago. Okay, got it. 4.9 acres. Cross the cross the That's that's outlined together. There's a little triangle in there between the post and the property here. So my only concern would be the impact on that property adjacent to us. And maybe you know we um, have new roads already, pretty busy roads. So I would wonder about the traffic and the implications for that. So from an impact. Tell me specifically what you're concerned about there. The taxes, increase in taxes or anything like that. Well, you know you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not opposed to it, per se. Okay. So, uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Joe Wright? Yes, sir. How are you, Joe? Good. Well, thank you for coming. A um, couple of questions I had are in regards to property 
that is associated to the same group. There's a 34.25 acre parcel, and then there's an additional 11 acre parcel that, according to the plat, the road that's going into this 33 acres, it, there's a there's at least there was at least a proposal on there to go into those additional problems. So we're only I mean we're only requesting the rezoning on this front one. But what about those additional problems? Okay, I'll speak to that in just a second. Uh, that covered? Um, for now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, we have a there's a sixty foot access uh, ingress and egress easement that is in place pretty much along that line. The other eleven acres we don't have any intentions of developing. The high side of that is under the <coughs> with the city of Jasper. So we want to currently what's possible in the separate zone. Okay. So and there's also an access on the other side. So, so did you follow that? I did. Uh, my understanding that the city had uh, denied the annexation. They did previously. And it's also my understanding that the access coming off the Cove Road is a service access only. It goes through uh, city property. No, it's full access. Okay. I was told I was told in the office here that it was a twelve a twelve foot service. He has a D. I can show you the D on the about the So it, it's recorded. It's recorded. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so does that leave you you you, you serve up against? Does that leave you still against or in between? Or where are you? I'm still against simply because of the growth we're having in Pickens County already. You know, if we keep changing agricultural property to Rural residential to state residential to all that, there, there's not going to be any agricultural property left. I mean, I understand this was not a farm property, but you know, it was it was one parcel that, from what I understood, a young man bought to build a residence on, and then essentially sold it to this Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, Addison Champion. This is your one. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Um, so, my question was kind of already answered, but I just want to backtrack and confirm. <laughs> the 11 acres that is on the back side of it was my biggest concern. I don't love the idea of a state residential because that means large houses, which means just a different, um, I guess, upbringing than what Pickens County is used to. We're kind of a tight knit group here, I guess, and like our small town vibes. And when you look at the projected um, house size that they have listed on the plan, it's 8,000 square feet, in case nobody knew that. So when you're talking at 8,000 square foot home versus like, up to an 8,000 square foot home. Okay, okay. That makes a lot more sense than 8,000 square foot. Those people would be scared of the snakes and the bears, you know? At $300 a square foot bill. Nice. So not many of those yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. But the 11 acres is on the back side of that. Did you say that you were hoping to not develop that? That's area? correct. Correct. Okay. Wonderful. Because there's a few of us on the opposite side of that that really like our forestry over here. <laughs> so, okay. That, that covers my question. Thank you. That's yeah. a county. That is a county wide thing. That's not something we propose for up to 8,000 square feet. Gotcha. Wonderful. Ronald West. I don't have anything because I've already heard, heard yep. enough. I, you heard enough? Yes. Yeah, he's, he's next to me, so okay. he has a question that I would ask. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all for coming and sharing your thoughts. Are there further questions from the board? <coughs> Excuse me. I buried a lot. A uh, minimum of three acres. Some of them are up to five. You can see the lot sizes. Each one is kind of different with the engineering came together. <clears throat> Further questions? Do 
Do I have a motion? Oh, I didn't. I thought you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you did. I'm yes. sorry. Planning and development staff recommends approval of the request to rezone 33.61 acres from agriculture to the state residential. In addition to this memo, I hereby incorporate the entirety of my office's file and video recording of the planning commission's hearing, including but not limited to all witness testimony, in order that this information be made a part of the record and shall be available for the Sorry, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> but for well, the benefit of all of you who have spoken, you now know that your conversations are official. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Our local council is on that off the road recommendation, so I will make a motion that we recommend approval based with the condition that he paid the votes. We have a recommendation with the condition. Is there a second to that? I'm in favor of the project, but I don't know. I don't know we have the ability to mandate that. If it's under a county code already. No, it's already under. You can if you'd like. Yeah. You, you can attach whatever conditions you like to make it fit and not the other thing at that point. If it's not paid. If you go to the county specs and they accept it, then they will take care of it. It's, you have to accept it. <laughs> that was not gated paid to this county responsibility. Not, not automatically. You can dedicate it and offer it to the county. The county would then have to take affirmative action to accept it and agree to it. But that's all part of building into the specs. Right. That was awesome. It's fairly expensive to do as well. I just did. Am I supposed to give you an answer to that? No. Today no. <laughs> I have no idea what that would cost. So. How, how big would it be as well as you would have to pay? Uh, we have to pull it up on the map. Well over a thousand. Linear. We have a motion. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. a second in that motion. If, if, if it's kept private, that's on you and your covenant. Yes, that's on you. I don't know if this makes any sense to say either or, but I mean. I understood that he wasn't going to try to keep it private and he no, it was private. Are you going to keep the roads private? Yes. And you're going to update them? Yes, yeah. Okay, then I'll withdraw them. In that case, I should recommend. You'll recommend. That we recommend approval. <laughs> so, approval as submitted. And we have a second. Is there further discussion? All in favor? Raise your right hand. Motion carries. Tighten okay. those out. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll now open up um, CU 190598, Susan and Stewart. Susan and Stuart Anthony are requesting a conditional use permit. The property is located in Capitol Drive. The request is for the construction and use of an event venue. Use is allowed in agricultural zoning with a conditional use permit. The applicant is requesting to is requesting a conditional use permit for the event venue. The applicant intends to build a facility that will house a wine tasting room and can be used as an event venue to host weddings, yoga, and other small events, and to promote agritourism. Currently, the parcel has a house on it that is used as a residence. They are planning to um, clear four or five acres to start planting their own vineyard. And staff recommends approval of the request for a conditional use permit for an event venue. The suggested conditions, if approved, of limit the building size to 4,000 square feet. Commercial development standards must be followed. 
clearing limited to building a parking lot, great fun, obviously soon, and event time limited to 10 p.m. In addition to this memo, I hereby incorporate the entirety of my office's file in the video recording of the Planning Commission's hearing, including but not limited to all witness testimony in order that this information be made a part of the record and shall be available for the Board of Commissioners to review. Actually, we Yeah. Okay. Um, Ms. Anthony, go back to the... Go back to the... Has submitted uh, two building plans or drawings of conceptual drawings of what they would like the venue to look like when they get it constructed. This right here is the residence that is currently there. That is one conception. And then there's another one. Well, first, thank you all for your time. Um, I just want to acknowledge Bethany and her department and all people have spent countless hours answering my questions and phone calls, so I appreciate that. Um, if you go back a couple slides, well, Ashley, I think it'll help you see back up a few more, a few more, one more. Okay, if you look at these parcels, we're talking about the one on the bottom. And so our house that we currently live in, we moved to, um, it's just uh, county just July of this year, which, <clears throat> by the way, I love the country. I just said I'm a corporate executive that was retired. I've traded my high heels in for mud boots. Haven't seen snakes yet, but he'll guard me from that. <laughs> but um, the house in the current zoning, we formed a company called Lakeside Valley Vineyards. So in the current zoning and the codes we've read, we can do the bed and breakfast in the house, so we're currently just painting and get it ready for B and B rooms. And then the building that we're proposing, if you go one more slide down yeah, now, okay. is like kind of well, you see this has a pointer if you want to use it. Does it? Thank you. Go okay, go ahead back one more. Um, okay, go back one more slide. That's the house it's is not right. Right. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so where the house is right here, this is a big long road going through it. And then the proposed building is like kind of right, well, it's actually into this parcel, the 27.5 acres that we're looking, that we need the conditional use for. So be it that we can already in the current zoning of egg, do the ordinary and tasting room, we just want to be able to be legit by holding events, like micro weddings, not big weddings. We know about Sharp Top Mountain or whatever venue, and they hold huge weddings because they have all that acreage. We, only have the 27 acres there. So we want micro weddings ever since COVID are a really big thing. My son and daughter-in-law and four of my grandbabies, or just, oh, two of them are here tonight. Sarah's a professional wedding photographer, so she wants to help us run the wedding venue and do the weddings. And we're well aware of the 10 p.m. ordinance. Um, if you understand where the road is from Tabitha, it's way up here. So we're not clearing any of this acreage here that'll all be natural buffers for sound. And you know, most uh, when, or the winery part, it'll come out here where they can, people can see the lake and sit outdoors. So a lot of wineries have maybe you know, a three band person, like a local artist that are during the daytime hours. So we're gonna keep this all natural, not building you know, a subdivision or anything back there. So the intent is to keep it natural, keep it beautiful, and only clear the state required acres for vines. So that's, um, I think the buffers naturally around it are going to provide the quiet. It's not going to be any louder than the kind of what saying here at night. <laughs> so I don't know if we missed anything. We've already done what the fire marshal wants to double wide the road to the winery, and we've done the soil test, which is um, where the stuff is going that um, is good soil. Questions? How many of the grapes that you're using to make the wine are you actually going to grow about percentage? Well, Georgia State law requires 40%, so they give you a little bit of uh, break on that because it takes three to four years for your vines to produce grapes. So, in other words, in the interim, we've taken both already finished wine from other local wineries, and I would say most of the Georgia wineries get <coughs> excuse me, a lot of their juice in from other states, but then there's 
wineries in the south, like Currie, where the peach and the sweet wines come in, and the muscadines and that sort of thing will plant. So it's just going to take a little bit to get up to that 40%, but we'll bring in more some other local vineyards in the meantime. We'll get 40%. Um, will not be out of state. Right, Georgia law says you have to have 40% from the state of Georgia agriculture, and that could be like one of my colleagues here that's a consultant on Karen Hugh Vineyards. They did a blueberry one this year because blueberries, I guess, are a big crop in Georgia that I didn't know about. Um, but in the meantime, you, you have to have at least four acres cleared, and we don't plan to clear any more than four acres, which is why a lot of this is just going to stay natural forest around us. But we, when we bought the property, it was sold to all three parcels, so we have to have all three. And this acreage on the top, there's 11 acres on the top, two acres where the house is, and the 27 down here, um, is there's just this little corner that's going to be the venue. So we only, it's very expensive to make wine out of grapes, <laughs> so we probably won't put any more than the four acres because it's too much labor and cost to try to get wine productive out of the grapes. That's I'm probably not the best way to say it, but maybe Brad or Brian can expand on that. It's just to do all the equipment and everything you need to make it with just Georgia grapes only and be in a state vineyard is a lot more money than to blend in with other. That's why they have the 40% rule. So the point is we won't probably clear it any more than the four acres required, at least at this juncture. There's no good plans for that. How do you define a micro like 75 to 100 people. So um, we were going to try to do a tasting room in our basement, but when we went to the Department of Health, we were going to have to have all another septic system. So we like to follow all the rules. I think I've read the whole section 63 and whatever of the code. So we decided not to do it in the house because just logistically it wouldn't make good sense for ADA compliance. and. Since we would have had to add a whole other septic, it made sense to just wait and do the building and put that money into the septic on the building. So we've already had Maxis Engineering, we've already had you know do the soil, we've already had the road double wide for Shane uh, Marshall's the fire marshals request, etc. But yeah, seventy five to hundred is about what a building that we're proposing that three thousand square feet will hold. Or three to four thousand, because part of that about fifteen hundred is um, production for barrels and fermentation tanks and things like that. Are you are all living on the premises? Then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you plan to be there permanently? Is that the goal? Yes. Um, ultimately, if revenue goes well, we'd like to own the eleven acres that's a we'll have a separate house up there, so that just the house now could be all rooms, and ultimately maybe our family would come with up there too with the one house and the 10 acres kind of thing. But that's down the road. We've got to get revenue in Boston first. Okay. Further questions from the board for the applicant? We've got some folks that want to speak. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, uh, Brent Hancock. How are you ready? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm the owner of uh, Karen B. Winery and uh, Bent Lodge. Ben Tree Lodge and Vineyard. We came to the county, we moved up here and bought uh, 15 acres right behind the was on horseback to open up a bed and breakfast. And the planners at that time, we had a great commission planner that worked us through and said, first thing you need to do is get your zoning changed so that you can do things at our bed and breakfast like uh, retreats, like yoga events, like whatever. You have to have the zoning to be able to do those small events. So we got the zoning, and then four years later, three years later, we ended up at the winery. So they're looking to do exactly what we're doing. And uh, it's great agritourism for the community. Um, our winery is continuing to grow, and we do things a little differently at ours than all the other ones because we don't want to be a Chateau Maitre. We don't want to have 1,500 people come through on any given weekend day. Um, so we do things by reservation to keep things small. Um, but without that zoning, we wouldn't be able to have live music play on the weekends, which is a great attraction. And we wouldn't be able to have um, rehearsal dinners. We wouldn't have been able to host the, the Rotary, uh, Dickens County Rotary, Pass with the Gavel that we did this past year. So all of those things you can't do without the zoning. So I am really supportive of the zoning, and um, 
I know they're, they've got a great model for what they're trying to do, and um, so that's why I'm speaking in favor of it, because it'd be great for the community. And the other piece of it, there's like seven or eight other wedding venues around the area that they need places to be able to have rehearsal dinners and places to stay, because there's not enough what I call nice accommodations, unless you call them micro tell nice. Uh, there's not enough nice accommodations in the area for people coming to the area and really showcase the community. So I, I support this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Celia Wolf, is that correct? How are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you for coming. Um, what are your questions? Thoughts? So my question is, the whole, there's the ordinance of the 10 p.m. The sound barrier that you think would be achieved by the trees. I grew up on that property. That was my aunt's property. Standing on the back, standing when I go to feed my horse in the evening, I could hear them having conversations on the porch of the house. So if you're proposing a, another menu that's closer to the property, I would hear it personally. Personal so where, where are you in relation to this property? So back where they were pointing where they would clear out more acreage to build another you know, venue, that's where my property starts. It's my family property. My dad's had it since the 80s. He has since passed. It's not really my other guys. Yeah. Yeah, so where the grain starts, that's our property. Um, yes, correct. And once again, it's a residential area. The traffic that, uh, you know, weddings bring in, I don't see how that's possible. Um, sure, you have to shut it down by the time clock, but that's by the time everyone else is wanting to get Thank you. Any other questions? And is it Ruby? Yes. Ruby, do you want to add something there? I'm Cecilia from Um. Like she said, she grew up there, my son grew up there, you know, they spent their summers on the way. That was my sister-in-law's house. In fact, she owned the house across the way from there. That's our property that, you know, attaches my bus to that property. And um, like she said, we can hear whatever's going on in the construction. The construction and you know, the, the bullets and the trees coming down. I can hear a car coming down the driveway and the door. Um, and you know, the way the, the property is over there, the lake is in the fold, we have to go square. Um, it's a valley to our house. Everything that goes on there, you can hear um, the Native American, as you probably all know, because we should be old. Um, we used to have a drum practice out there, and we had friends on there in Sequoia. They could hear it. From Ireland to the top of Mount Sequoia very easily. And the sound just carries. So, events out there, we'll be, we can hear um, people on Gregory Drive in the summer. We have the radios on. I can hear them in my front yard, like in front of the store. So, 10 p.m., you know, they're in a residential area. They didn't buy commercial property. They were already cars. You know, there's so many houses. These people live right there. There's going to be so much traffic. It's a very small road to have a road and You know, there's so much to consider, not just 10 p.m. Because everybody likes to spend out at night. They're going to be hearing whatever noise because it carries so much. And it's just the way the land is set up. So if it's going to pass, it means maybe not have just the 10 p.m. But, um, curfew, but maybe something less because we are the producers. We do it. And so we're very mindful. We set up the things. We don't go past the video on Saturday night and on Sundays. We shut our minutes down at 6 p.m. because we take into consideration where we set up and our normies collect because we have events that have a sound of And we do make a lot of noise about events. So the same thing, you know, even though you said your weddings are going to be smaller, we just had her um, wedding at her house. and. We didn't go very long. We didn't go very long into the night because we had it at home and we had a beach as well. So um, that scent, you know, is the biggest thing for us. Thank you.
in a building, we're going to be indoor, and I understand the previous owner was doing retreats and call-outs without the zone. I'll give you a chance. Okay. <laughs> Amanda? <laughs> so my dad is actually going to be bringing um, all of the committee members a petition signed by all of our neighbors on Tabitha and Gregory Drive opposing this uh, conditional approval. And I hope you guys will bear with me for just a few minutes uh, because I have quite a detailed opposition that I'd like to go through um, some of the most salient points. Um, the petition is quite detailed as well, but this is just some high points of kind of what, um, why we feel that it is so important to oppose this. Can we, can we do this in about five minutes? Uh, I'll talk as fast as I can. <laughs> so um, I have lived at this property at 304 Tabitha Drive or two houses down. Um, I grew up there. My dad also brought, bought the property in the 80s um, around the same time as Chippa. So we've been neighbors my entire life, and I recently moved back to the area. My husband and I lived with my parents um, two doors down uh, and have lived there for the last few months. We just moved back to the area from Florida. However, I did grow up on this property. Um, I'm uh, presenting a petition for my dad, Jay Arnold, signed by myself and all of our neighbors on Tabitha and Gregory Drive that we were able to speak to. Um, which I think we're only missing maybe one or two people on the entire street. Um, we have been fortunate to welcome many neighbors to our street since my dad first brought, bought the property in the mid 80s. Um, and it has been great. We've loved having neighbors um, and it's been a great place to grow up. I've been very safe, very happy. We had a lot of freedom growing up in that area. And since it is a primary resident, primarily residential area. That is what I would hope for for my nieces who spend a lot of time at my parents' house and for the many other children that now live in the area. We believe that the construction of an event venue would be an affront to the peaceful rural lifestyle that our, us and our neighbors enjoy. Further, it is clear based on the factors outlined in the guidelines for conditional approval that it would be inappropriate to approve an event venue at this location. While I can appreciate the desire to monetize the beautiful property where this uh, proposed venue would be located, I think it, it would fail to meet nearly every guideline needed for conditional approval. Um, I have provided uh, copies of the petition, so I'm not going to read it verbatim. Um, however, first and foremost among our concerns uh, that is outlined in the petition is safety. Um, we live at the end of a long, hilly, one-lane road. In the past decade or so, it has uh, been turned from gravel to tar, or from purely gravel to a tar and gravel paving, which you, most Pickens County people are familiar with. It's not a true paved road, just basically it keeps the dust down. Um, no other precautions have been added since uh, changing it to a quote-unquote paved road such as reducing the steep slopes of the hills, adding guardrails or lane markers. As residents going in and out of the road once or twice a day, we're totally happy with this arrangement. Traffic is slow and quiet. Typically, the only people who venture to our area are residents and our own visitors. An event venue would uh, add a dangerous influx of traffic to our quiet country lane. I provided some photos of current road conditions in our neighborhood on page two of the supplementary photos. The entrance to our neighborhood on Gregory Drive is marked by a bi-directional blind hill that is extraordinarily steep. Cars traveling too quickly over this hill and or not staying to their right already cause near misses on a regular basis. And to make this road uh, safe to be traversed by unfamiliar visitors on a regular basis, the hill would essentially need to be removed with significant grading on both sides to lessen the severity of the slope and lack of visibility. The entire road from the intersection of Gregory Drive and Henderson Mountain Road, as well as the entirety of Tabitha Drive, would need to be widened, paved with standard asphalt, and have lane markers added to control the direction of traffic flow. This would present a significant hardship to all of my neighbors, especially those whose houses are not significantly set back from the current road configuration, of which there are several. Further, this is currently a safe, quiet lane where people and pets can walk, children can ride bikes without significant fear of traffic accidents. 
The proposed venue is specifically focused on the consumption of alcohol. As we are a small town without significant access to public transit, cabs, or Ubers, my great fear would be that drunk and tipsy patrons would have no recourse other than to drive themselves to and from this event venue. While our road presents a slight hazard now to familiar residential drivers, I fear that presented with drunk drivers unfamiliar to the area, the road would soon become deadly for patrons and or myself and my neighbors. I'm neither comfortable with that notion, nor am I enthused by the idea of our tax dollars being used to widen, grade, and repave nearly a mile of roadway as shown on page three of the supplementary photos for the benefit of one business at the detriment of all residents in the area. Secondly, I would like to address the issue of noise, traffic, and the overall hardship created by an event venue in a largely residential area. On page four of the supplementary photos, I provided an aerial map of the neighborhood with use cases for each highway. As you can see, although the site of the proposed venue is currently zoned for agriculture, Almost the entire surrounding area is zoned as residential, apart from two lots marked for conservation. Having recently moved from a downtown area, I can say with confidence that events are loud and disruptive, even hundreds of yards away from your home. While I chose to live in a city for quite a long while, I know none of my neighbors moved out into the middle of nowhere to be next to a loud, noisy event venue. Many people in our area get up early for work and children get picked up by school buses prior to 7 a.m. None of these people should be bothered by events even as late as 10 p.m. at night. When you're getting on the school bus at 7 a.m., you have to get up at 5.30, 6 a.m. at the latest just to get on the school bus. So a 10 p.m. ending time is much too late for a residential area. Due to the geography of the proposed site, I can agree with the Wolves and tell you that we have observed over the past several decades that any noise travels across the lake and valley to all homes surrounding the proposed site. In fact, we often hear cows mooing from the far side of the site, so all the way across their property. An event venue is going to be a lot louder than our livestock neighbors. You're not objecting to the cows. No. <laughs> In fact, I would welcome more livestock in the area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, if they would like to have cows instead of an event venue, I would be happy to have them. Um, we need to wrap up. Okay. My last point is that um, I'd like to just very briefly touch on the Joint Comprehensive Plan, which lays out how the county is supposed to be planned and zoned. This area is specifically zoned for um, rural development. And that is basically supposed to be very low intensity use. Um, and it is earmarked as an area that lacks a high level of public water, road services, and other public services. Um, we do have county water out there. We don't have sewer. And as you can see on the photos, we have very little, um, you know, we have very minimal road infrastructure. So it's just, it is, uh, blatantly against how the comprehensive development plan from 2018 lays out how the western part of the county should be developed. Um, it is not preserving the rural character and it is not a low intensity use. So I just want to express my sincere gratitude to the committee members and the community members uh, for your consideration today. Um, and uh, I really uh, just want to underscore the inappropriateness of approving the conditional use permit at this time. Um, I appreciate uh, your consideration of these concerns, and I appreciate your dedication to the well-being of our community. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. All right, uh, Paula, Paula Hutchins. Hi. She is. How are you, Paula? Hi, Mom. How are you? What can you add that hasn't already been well, said? That checked an awful lot of time boxes. Um, and I, I'd like to be a good neighbor to everybody, including mm -hmm. yes. a bed and or possible venues. We recently purchased the property and on the property right next to uh, on the on the lake. On the other side. On the other side. And um we own, I've come who owns the lake? We well we own a little section of it, but it's a county <laughs> reservoir. Um but I, 
I have a couple questions. Um, water was a big concern. We found out there is no water actually down, or water services brought down to the end of the cul-de-sac there. So I would be concerned about any kind of fire hazards, things like sparklers, fireworks, things that are set off a lot of times in these kinds of venues. Um, I have questions I, I may be misunderstood, but I thought we talked about might have mentioned to you that um, the noise would be kind of inside the venues. Being that we live right there next to you on the lake and in, in that hole, valley, the noise. in the hole. You're on the cul-de-sac though? On the no. Side? No. We're on the, we're on the, on the same side. Literally on the, on the other side of your 11. Okay. Um, this is way out. This is way out. Well, you, yeah. you also mentioned bands playing on the lake. And the lake is a huge appeal. It's the huge appeal that brought us there. And I know it's, I'm sure it's a huge appeal for the Anthony's there as well. Um, and it, it's been noise. The noise would be going 10 o'clock at night is a late time when you're doing it. No one wants to live next to the party house. Um, it would be it would a lot of people. And also something we haven't really discussed a whole lot is property value. Um, when I've looked into other things in the area, things that are considered red flags when you're searching for new property. Noisy neighbors is always in the very top few issues that people have when they're moving to communities. We would not have bought a property, if I'm being honest. We would not have bought a property if we knew that this is what was going to come to store us. We're not sure. We're not sure what to do moving forward, depending on how this goes. We purchased this thinking this is going to be our nice, quiet little forever home. It's very, very affordable. And something commercial like this. It not only impacts the decision like now for this small piece of property and in our neighbors here, but it also impacts how the county moves forward, talking about agricultural land and whether or not they're going to allow commercial creep into these little residential neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jeff, okay, that concludes everybody that was going to speak. Let me just let me just say that um, I appreciate everybody's comments, both for and. The, the staff takes into all of the things that have been presented tonight in their review. It, it's not done, you know, with, without a comprehensive review of all the requests. So while you, you made uh, good points from your perspective, I personally have confidence in the staff in terms of where they go through the review process. So I just want, I just want to state that. Um, What I, what I hear as main concerns are noise and traffic. Safety, 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 safety. The roads. Uh, I find it hard to believe they actually came out and looked at those roads. Like, you know, they agree with it. That's hard for me to do. Well, yeah. they, you know, they, they would have had to have looked at it. No, I haven't looked at it, but they would have had to have looked at it. Is that true? Did you staff? Did y'all come and look at the roads? We we mostly get in, but then once it's if it's approved, then once the marshal knows. So Todd Marshall is the owner of that. Well, he's a he's a he's a county. He's one. There's a there's more than one person who gets that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
the primary goal is the winery, and in the current zoning, a winery and tasting room is allowed. So there would be traffic anyway, but as Brent said, we want to control that environment so that it's reservations, it's not huge, it's not hundreds of people, because we live there too. And so unfortunately, because we've been fixing everything going on in the house, we haven't had a chance to get out and get to know all the neighbors. But from the traffic in the road, I agree on the road because I dropped my daughter, who was in the back of the room as well, at the bus stop and I started just driving her. I reached out to Kirk Anderson at the road department saying, please do something about this pothole because I almost got hit head on on the road going up. And in fact, because of my um, pleasant persistence, I would say, we got the pothole fixed and I asked to get some riprap in the you know, ditches that were too deep because I said, look, I'm going to be opening a winery. I don't want people to fall in. And the whole drunkenness and alcohol goes to, I've led organizations my entire corporate career. And it goes to training about alcohol and, you know, monitoring and the tasting room people. So we plan to do the best we can control that. My daughter's going to get married there in October. She can, even with all the zoning because she's family. Our parking lot's only going to hold 40 cars. I've already checked on things like shuttle buses so that there isn't a lot of traffic so that people can go to the venue safely and back. So all these things are on our heart and mind for concerns as well, too. The noise, most wineries close at, you know, 6, maybe 7 or 8 on a Saturday to watch a sunset. So the bands are just there like a 3 to 5 thing. My husband's a professional singer. You're talking about like Surrender Hill. It's a two-person trio. And as I stated, there were already the... Or, that's a duet. I'm sorry, a trio would be <laughs> the, um, the previous owner, you know, was running powwows and retreats, as I understand it. So wherever the history falls with that, we're just, the weddings in the indoor nature, a wedding's usually done at 4 o'clock. There might be a piano music while the bride walks down, and then the rest of it's going to go indoors with the, you know, DJ in an enclosed building. So we could certainly put more uh, insulation in the walls and things of that nature, but you know, our plan is to have work with local venues, support local. I was on the phone today with the uh, caterer of downtown and with shuttle bus people to try to get proper people because you can't get Uber out here, so people can't just you know drive a lot 50 cars from the wedding, and you know, we don't want people driving drunk either. So, I do think there could be some better things done with the road, albeit. But um, most people going to wineries in the North Georgia Mountains are used to driving the dirt road to get to a farm winery. So either way, I think we bought it so we could open the winery. That was my life retirement dream. And we and did. Some grapes. And grow some grapes. Yeah, if I couldn't plant grapes in 10 vineyards here, I wanted to do it in heaven. So currently I'm doing it on this land. But um, that's all I can address in terms of the noise. I can only control that so much. We too hear conversations. We hear shotguns. We hear the coyotes, we hear the cows, Absolutely. we are the chickens, you know, Sarah wants chickens, so I suppose we can get those, but okay. that's all I can say to those issues. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Further questions from the board? I have a quick question. Would you consider the um, limited time from 10 o'clock p.m. to something 8? Well, I would tell you that if I would, I guess, ask back to you if you were getting married on my property, would you want to be done at 9 o'clock? Usually people at 10 o'clock are unreasonable. There might be a way to, to make that work, especially considering what she just mentioned. Where, you know, yeah. We wouldn't dial the whole thing down, but where the potential noise and the disturbance that everybody's concerned about mm -hmm. would come into play, there may be a way for us to design that. So and, that so <coughs> I'm also talking about only like 10 weddings a year. I don't want to go crazy dealing with Rodzilla's my whole life. It's primarily the winery. Um, and, you know, again, my daughter in law in the back as a photographer, part of one of the rooms we're going to build in the, the winery mm -hmm. building is just so, you know, she can do some photography for people. You know, events like senior portraits, family portraits, the property is beautiful, the views are beautiful, and the mountains and the lake. So that's uh, the goal. Thank you. Further questions? Well, um, I would like to address as far as the roads and the construction and things of that nature goes. Once the Anthony's, if it's approved by the board of commissioners, if the Anthony when they start committing their building plans and that kind of thing, all of those concerns have to be addressed before anything will be signed off on. 
from beginning to end. So it's not, you know, we go out and we take a look and we take all everybody's concerns into consideration. We take, we have a host of things that we have to go through before we will approve something like this, especially for commercial development, which this will be considered commercial. So why would you recommend you do that process? We have seen it and they have taken some of the suggestions that have been put before them before I was in place. So therefore, no, it's, it, it's, it's, it's been in the process of being addressed, but once they submit actual construction plans. And once you change the, the, the zoning, you can do the conditional changes. I, I understand they're hard, but they can do whatever those things allow. That's the bottom line. That's the reason <laughs> Further questions from the board? Y'all stated that you, you live across the lake or near them on the lake. Yeah, we can. Can, you, can you see, would they be able to see the venue from where you're building it? No, no. What, you're, in, you're in a little um, valley and yeah, the mole, a, yeah, sound, I get it. the sound bounces. No, you can't see you can anything see lake, down, but you can see the lake. The lake. But the sound bounces all around inside of that ball. So if they're playing down, but having a band or something down by the lake or anything like right. there, right, right, right. I understand. So is there a, is there some kind of barrier we could put up to kind of outdoor barrier trees or there's already a lot of natural berms to that would help block some of that? I I wouldn't know. I'm not a musician. I don't. I mean, inside so, certainly, but I mean, again, I we're talking about. Like a Saturday from three to five. I, you know, I understand. Man. So I guess if they don't want a free concert, I, yeah. I can't. I don't. I don't know what I could build. I can put pine trees around there. There'll be grapevines and there's already trees, but it is a valley. So, you know, Jesus preached off the water so that people could hear it. I can't probably control that noise okay. for their satisfaction. I don't. I'm happy to plant things, but I don't truthfully know that that will stop sound for a couple hours. <coughs> Okay. Did I understand you to say that the weddings would all be inside? Well, the ceremony for the bride, most people want to get married in front of the water. If I had a picture to show you the view, it's the beautiful J-shaped lake and then four mountains. So they're going to want to get married right down there. So there would just be that maybe processional music. And then the soda, put on dance party if somebody wants that. It's going to be indoors, food indoors, all of that. So that's... So the events will be catered or will they be put on the Catered. Yeah, catered. Further questions? And again, I'm, I'm talking about maybe 10, 15 weddings a year. I don't want this to be a big wedding. This is just another revenue vertical. So I can pay, of course, the American reason. Understood. All right. Do I have a motion? I have a motion that we recommend denial. We have, have a recommendation to deny the request to submit it. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Okay. Is there further discussion?
stops maintaining it at our driveway, which is not in the middle, but about a third of the way back. Yeah, right about there, right about where the deed is on the road, or maybe just the uh, And the county has never actually taken possession of the right of way for the road that they're maintaining. Uh, and we own the property to the center line of the road, and when we sold across the, across the road to neighbors here. Uh, he owns the property to the center of the road and the road is currently in a, a bit of a limbo and I think needs to be addressed. Um, the placement of your mailbox is a problem for us as well because when people come in to drive in, they come up to the creek where you've got to cross a creek that doesn't have a bridge or a culvert or anything or a bridge. And the only mailbox you can see is 52, and the previous one on that side of the road is 168, and we're 150. And the previous owner obstructed our mailbox with his, and we get stuff that gets returned as undeliverable. We get 
misdelivered stuff, and that's a problem as well. But I, I have less of a problem if it's going to be a guest house on a single parcel than I would if they were trying to subdivide it and have two parcels. Sounds like mailbox could get moved. You know, I, I think we can probably do something with the mailbox. I we, was, we didn't put the mailbox there. But yeah, but yeah, I was sign, considering, I but the previous, yeah. the previous owner is, and I did get along. Uh, I would actually consider building a parcel blocker there and two mailboxes on it and mark it better. It, it's also a concern if we ever had to dial 911 and they came back there, yeah. how are they going to find it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, the, uh, it's, it's an issue. The county maintained road sign. It's right by there, so I'm wondering if they did it because when she delivers the mail. Yeah, she will not go on to a private road. So I don't know if I can put it further than that. Um, Maybe on the I, other side I, of the driveway. I honestly wish the county would maintain it down to where you drive when it gets it. That could get worked. Whatever we can do, we'll we do it. it. We, we need to put a petition there. for that to happen. Yeah. Uh, that that is my biggest concern. Yeah. The road. I can't solve a we can't solve a road problem. I know, yeah. but uh, there is a road problem. No, that needs to be resolved. And maybe the commissioners can resolve that. Maybe the road department needs to resolve yeah. that. But we need to get something moving on that before we move forward. Um, so I understand you're right. You're not as I was concerned that they were going to subdivide. They're more comfortable and, with it saying the way it's going to be with two houses. Right, two 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 structures on a single on a single lot. I'm less uncomfortable with than I am if they were trying to divide it into two two acre parcels, which um, which is what I kind of read into it when I first heard about it. So, uh, well, given given the challenges of getting the mail this day and time, anything that can be done to improve. Yeah, I think maybe you and I need to talk about that. Just sure. Nice meeting, by the way. Okay. Pretty much met everyone else on the room. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're not around a lot. We're kind of reclusive, too. Yeah. So, um, that's well, our, our children already drive to school. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, but I don't want I want it to open. I want to make sure it's either one way or the other, and then we help them get what they want. I mean, that's all I'm trying to do. Yeah. But it, it, it didn't sound to me that what they're going to be doing is going to impact you one way or the other. Well, they got half my, they took their right away, now it became their private land, and now they want my side <laughs> access, so it does affect me. Yeah, it shows right on that map. So it's my private land to cross. Good to see you again. All right. Um, very good. Questions from the board? You're going to get that mailbox moved. We'll talk about that. Yeah. If, she'll, if she'll deliver mail to us, that'd be great. All right. Hearing no further questions, do I have a motion? We have a motion to move. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Thank you all. All right, we're going to close that hearing. You're leaving. You said there's football on. I'm missing it. We're going to open a new hearing on 190609. Affirmative investment. David's been sitting there very patient. We'll get to you in a second. But first, we're going to hear from you. Affordable Investments LLC. This project is located on Highway 136 Connector. They are requesting to change the zoning from agriculture to small agriculture. It is 17.447 acres, and the applicant intends to create two buildable lots. The Staff recommends approval of the request to rezone from ag to small ag. In addition to this memo, I hereby incorporate the entirety of my office's file and the video recording of the Planning Commission's hearing, including but not limited to all witness testimony, in order that this information be made a part of the record and shall be available for the Board of Commissioners to review. Okay. As you can see, that is the parcel that is um, up for rezone. It is surrounded by primarily agriculture, property, room, residential, a little bit of HD down the street. And there it is without all the um, color on it. I think right now it's used for pasture land. David, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> I promise I'm not doing a special event, and I got State Highway and County Road next to me. Jane doesn't tell us what you're going to do. I didn't even sit too long. Uh, we got 17 acres. Joey and I bought it. That creek line in the middle of it, uh, right there, is the perfect way to split that property. Uh, there's only two buildable spots. One's up on the knoll um, at the corner of Willow and 136, and one's back there on the other southeast side of the property. Uh, sole work's done. I think we're putting a deep restriction on it where you can't split it again, giving everybody exactly what they want, large mini, mini farm. Uh, we just can't stay under the 10 acres in order to split. Um, so there'll be two houses maximum. That's it. You going to build those houses yourself? Don't know. Um, I mean, if someone wants to stick, yeah. we, we would, but we're probably going to put them out there for the person wanting to do a barn dominium or you know, whatever house they want, but we will have some restrictions. No mobile homes. Um, I know we're doing that, and then you can't split it again, can't rezone it again. So. No, it won't perk for safety, but in those two spots no. I picked out. But it works good for that. But that's the locus of flood plain. So it's perfect for cows, horses, small farms, perfect for what everybody wants. D and uh, DOT had no problem with the uh, entrance on that front. Lot, and then I think the back one's going to be off Willow, which already has a culvert in. Where did you say that front, that front lot is going to be? Uh, the, the tree area up top, top right, right there. Okay. I live on the property that's adjacent to it. I almost get hit every day going in my driveway because of that curve. So, we'll I'll get her announcement if she's going to speak, but it's. Yeah. Anna Marie Edwards. But I would be wary of putting another driveway on there 
on 136 there because we've talked to them several times about putting up signs to, you know, blind driveway and no one is, they won't put up a sign for us on that. That, that all comes down to the DOT, right? right? They control that right away and access, ingress, and everything. So, I mean, that's a, that's a different body to, to right. But I think it's something to think about when you're a builder and you're developing a property to put the home on. Because I'm in real estate too, so I know yeah, you're will. developing a property, you want to build a home on it. Is it going to be something that's safe for the individuals who move? Understood. Understood. Again, though, it's the DOT is in control, total control. And then they'll tell where that, where that can be and where it can't be. Well, maybe that's something we could get together with and discuss with the DOT about getting a sign up there that says blind driveway coming around either side of the curve. You don't want it on 136. You, you don't want a driveway. Well, that's what I mean. That's what you guys were saying. Here. No, you know, no, David just don't. I mean, we've talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm saying. I know you don't want one on 136. I've talked to the DOT about some other stuff in that area, and the DOT said, well, that's not going to happen. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's what I'm saying. 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 That's what i am Thank you for straightening out there. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Joey. Well, I've been out there clearing it, and I've looked at it, and I was out there with Soul Guy, so I've already got it. It's got a, it's going to look good off Willow. That is good. It is that that is hard pulling out a Willow on a one thirty six. You got to get almost down the road yes. so you can see the. Any the trucks fly through there? So yeah. If you're, when you get out of the road, you better go. The OT said there's plenty of sight distance anywhere right through there uh, to do what we wanted, but. The, Topography, the driveway is going to cut in better if it comes off Willow. I stand by my statement. We talked to them when they said yeah. it was good. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say we were going further, there. Further questions for the board? I have a quick question. <coughs> did, did you say no? Did I hear you just say no um, mobile home? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. We're going to be we, we, that. Uh, no breaking it up and no redone. Okay. Yes, I just sir. wanted to make sure I was clear. Okay. All right. Further discussion? Motion? Make a motion. Sir. Move. move in a second. Further discussion? Sir. All in favor? Aye. Raise your right hand. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see y'all in the following. Thank you. All right, we're down to the last item. Everybody's We'll close that hearing and open RZ190610 Stevens. This property is located at 693 Upper Salem Church Road. The applicant requests to rezone from highway business to agriculture. It is 11.89 acres. The current zoning does not allow for single family residential structure. The staff recommends approval to rezone the 11.89 acres from highway business to agriculture. In addition to this memo, I hereby incorporate the entirety of my office's file and the video recording of the Planning Commission's hearing, including but not limited to all witness testimony in order that this information be made a part of the record and shall be available for the Board of Commissioners to review. If you will look behind you, it's um, a big mixture of agricultural and rural residential. His parcel is that purple highway business right there, and I used to have some kind of track on it. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to see the purple one again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Stephen Smith, tell us what's going on here, guys. Uh, this was formerly Charlie Paget's uh, go-kart track. This is Charlie's son. He lives next door to the property, and uh, we just we've done away with the track, done away with all the lighting, all the concessions, all the uh, bleachers, all that type of stuff, and we're just we want to go home. That's what probably makes some people happy. I hope <laughs> <laughs> we've not had any complaints so far. I mean, go karts make a little bit of noise last time. Literally, so it's all gone. <clears throat> so, what else are you going to do on that? Property, won't you just build a shop around race park? That's as bad as the weather, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not just off. Yeah. Okay. 
Any questions from the board? Do have a motion?